is still coming to you live from our Lagos studio as Niger decides. Now, the Lagos Gubantero race seems like it's going to be a tight one. Today, the Coalition of United Political Parties has endorsed the candidature of Babatunde Olaleri Badamosi, popularly known as BOG of Action Democratic Party, ADP, as the group's preferred candidate for the 2019 governorship election. Well, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashala, supports for the APC gubernatorial candidate, Babajidish Saonwolu, is no secret. Mm. To look at the three top candidates for Lagos, we still have in the studio our guest, Mr. Dikbo Alayoko. Uh, he's a journalist. Uh, now, looking at the, our opening, of course, and you live in Lagos, so you obviously know the intrigues of political parties and their candidates. The CUPP, which at some point should have been part of the third force, is throwing its weight behind Badamosi, which a lot of people see as a newcomer who's never really been, uh, you know, in politics. Does that make any change? Does that push him up to be a big contender with the two big wigs? That's the APC and the PDP. To ask her a question direct, I think I don't think so. How do I mean? Uh, the, UC, the CUPP will have been the much awaited thought first. But uh, what really happened, or what really was the problem, was that force, so called force, was being spearheaded by PDP. Uh, so the question of being a thought first does not arise, or did not arise. Now, I was surprised when I heard that uh, the UCUPP now according to the report I had, was that uh, only nine political parties now represent the CUPP. But the original CUPP that we used to know, and uh, being spearheaded by PDP, was about 40 something political no parties. No less than 35. 35 mm. then? No less, yes. Mm. Okay. So for now only nine of them to have come. I, I think the problem is the using the word CUPP. Because from the look of things, a CUPP without PDP is cannot claim that CUPP. Maybe it's better to say some political parties mm. have come together to. Now, to the issue of um, either endorsement, alliance, major, have always been part of Nigerian politics. If you go into the political history of Nigeria, where there was a time they had what they call OPGA, United People Grand Alliance, comprising of Baba Femi Awolowo's uh, action group and then uh, late Joseph Taka's um, United Middle Belt Congress mm. or so. So that was in the First Republic. Now in the Second Republic, after it was, it became glaring that NPN was coasting home to victory. The above world was UPN, late Waziri's GMPP, and uh, Dr. Nemanjazikwe's um, NPP. NPP came together to call form something like PPP. That was major. Mm -hmm. And in the Third Republic, where we had what became of APC, mm. what, what metamorphosed to APC was a major of C ACN, CPC, CPC AP, ANPP, and the faction of uh, APCA and mm. the new PDP. So it has always been there as part of Nigerian politics. But the point is, if we want to be sincere with ourselves, the March 9th congressional election in Lagos State is a straight battle between APC and PDP. If you want to be sincere with ourselves. Why do you think that a person like Badamosi would not stand a chance? Be being that, the 20 2019 elections has thrown up a lot of new candidatures and some of them are personalities who are strong outside of politics like Obadamasi we saw him during the um, debate although some people say debates don't win elections but he's a strong personality who has interesting ideas why do you not think that he would be a strong contender whether he's on the PDP ticket or not doesn't his personality speak to certain people you see what wins election is more than somebody just appearing like this Elections are won by people in the grassroots. How many politicians of uh, Baba Buhari, uh, President Buhari's stature that is assured, is assured of 12 million votes, whether he spent one proper or not? 
How many? Now, let's just go to the last presidential elections. We had the likes of Professor Kinsley Mogalu, a material for any country, any time, any day, capable to be the president of any country, any time, any time, any day. You have the likes of Femi Drotoye. You have the likes of the ACPN woman, Madame mm. Duprocess. We had uh, Showore. You know, we were just looking at the results. The all of them had was just barely tens of thousands. That's exactly what I'm, they, they, we were just looking at the results of the last election. But that's, that's presidential. This is late. No, listen, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, wait now. We discovered that all the other 71 political parties or candidates, their votes put together is not up to 1 million. All of them, 71 candidates. I think they have about 960 something thousand. Now let's come to Lagos. Yes, uh, BOG has, is fondly called by his supporters. Fantastic guy on uh, the debates. Don't forget this man. I don't see him as an outsider. He's still a member of PDP. Mm. He has always been. Contesting in 2011. He has always been. But because he realized the fact that with an agaji around, there was no way he could get the PDP ticket, get, he quickly looked for Defected. another ticket. Mm. And if you look at the level of our politics, my dear, I have been a journalist, I have covered elections for the, in the past 25 years. What wins election is the ability to say at Koshofe, something happened there. You pick your phone. Baba Lagbaja, they said something is happening within your area. What is happening? Report back. You mentioned um, anywhere you go to. You pick your call. You ha there must be somebody that is representing you there. That is politics. When you're talking of Lagos election, it has a lot of things to, a lot of things to do with the structure. What, the, what are the structures you have in place? Just to hold, hold that thought, we have a video of the CUPP uh, endorsing Mr. Padamosi as their mm. Gubert candidate. When we come back, we'll talk about how much on ground he mm. is. We'll be right back after the break. Barely three days to the governorship elections in Nigeria and in Lagos, the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP Lagos Chapter, has endorsed the candidate of the Action Democratic Party, Babatunde Badamosi. The outcome of the 2019 presidential elections last month has further confirmed the fears of many Nigerians for the future unity and well-being of the nation under our present crop of leaders. In appreciation of these fears, 33 political parties under the Coalition of United Political Parties, CPP, met and agreed to put resources together to ensure a break from the past 20 years that Lagos has been ruled by one party. Regarding widespread electoral violence that bedeviled the February 23rd presidential elections in Igbo-dominated parts of Lagos, the CUPP endorsed candidate insists that Lagos State remains home for all tribes. The question of indigenous or no indigenous has never really been a factor in Lagos. And this stems from the fact that Lagos was built anyway on the wave of on, on the back of waves and waves of immigration, starting from as far back as the 16th century. I think it's unarguable that perhaps the biggest member of the CUPP is the PDP, and they were a beneficiary of the CUPP initiative at the national level when uh, His Excellency President, uh, incoming President uh, Atiku Abubakar was adopted as the consensus candidate of the CUPP. Um, I'm happy that in Lagos, obviously, I'm the beneficiary. I'm very happy at that. Just recently in January, the CUPP secretary in the state had publicly adopted the SDP gubernatorial candidate, Dr. Adeto Kumbo Pierce, as the consensus candidate for the governorship election under the aegis of the Lagos Coalition of Political Parties. The question is, how come this vote face? In the past few weeks, 
you will recall that the party has been embroiled in one legal suit or the other. And it has really affected the morale of the voters. With Lagos sitting as the most powerful stronghold of the incumbent All Progressives Congress, APC, fronting Babajide Songolu as the party's gubernatorial candidate in the coming elections, will this endorsement do any magic to the chances of the newly endorsed candidate in this Saturday's elections? Plus, will the PDP's strong efforts to wrest the state from the APC affect the election equation? The voters will decide. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Hmm. Well, that is the report um, by Mary uh, Chinda. But with the analysis that she's thrown up, uh, again, I'm asking, why is there, there seems to be an affinity uh, of Nigerian voters to political parties and not necessarily the candidates. Why do you think that is? It is because of the level of awareness and education. Because unfortunately, it's quite on the day of election. People like you and I, you see that we are here, or you send somebody to the field, or you are seated in your sitting room watching uh, TV plus, are we? <laughs> plus the, what is plus what is happening? You wanting to know what is happening in the field. Mm. The people who vote, the real voters, don't have time for, for to watch television. Maybe Yasikira is just finishing or packing her wares at the uh, Ketu market to go home. When she gets home, she starts preparing food for, for the family. Or if it's a bomb Baba Sikira, Baba Tanju, who is a tailor, that has some thing, work to do. So all this debate, television, doesn't appeal to him. Mm. His own is, there's a fixated uh, mind. It's either APC or PDP or anything that comes on that platform. Go out there mm. and ask every other village of Nigeria. What is the logo of this ADP man they have, as they have ad, ad, um, endorsed? He will tell you logo. What is ADP? Our politics, our political awareness has got, not gotten to that level. I just came back from a tour of the North. We tour all the states in the North. And you see, at times when some of us sit in Lagos and talk about North, we'll be talking from the point of ignorance. My dear sister, let me tell you, an average Nottana takes politics as an industry. An average Nottana can kill from now till tomorrow morning because he wants to vote. With his radio, small radio, listening to information. We got to some places. From the main road, you will travel two and a half hours inside bumpy, uh, dusty, I don't want to call it road. Into Facts. two hours, go ahead, call it into the he bush, you will get there, you will see not an living, discussing politics. We got to a place. The man told us, because we also have a political party, we accompanied a governorship candidate in Bauchi State to that place. The man said since 1983, during the time of, during the, time of the former governor of Bauchi, Tatari Ali, that they had never set their eyes on a governorship candidate. What will happen? Mm. The leader of that community of about six or eight villages will go to town to go and bring information that, okay, tomorrow, send community the information to, our, to the communities. This is the person we are voting for. They have never set their eyes on that person they are voting for. And that's exactly what happened everywhere. Mm. On the eve of the election, there is a community leader. They, they send messages across to the voters that is Yasikira. Tomorrow, this person I'm going to vote for. In my house, I have a lieutenant before the elections. They were shouting, PDP, PDP, guru, guru, guru. That was the presidential election. About six days ago, because I traveled, I just came back today. He saw me, he said, ah, Daddy, at the DAPCO, ah, what happened? You know, the problem with Nigerian water, or those who shape opinion, is that. A president has emerged. Not many, not many people will want to be in the opposition. That's the weapon we are going to affect. Mm. So within the time they announce the election result, there is what they call political realignment, which, is, which happens everywhere. And you know, you know why, where the thing really fascinated, fascinated, uh, fascinated, fascinated me? The way they start, right there, because the woman is the, like the woman leader. 
he assembled his people. And the way he was telling them to go and be telling their followers that come February so so and March so so and so, this is the party they will vote for. That is how structures work. Mm. If you don't have that structure, where you can call anybody in any area, say this is the direction we are following. Because these people are not capable of independent reasoning. Somebody has told them this person we are voting for. And that is the problem with Mr. the Olo, of now, the vote. We understand how structures work and then this calls to mind one of the agenda that uh, Badamose has raised. He said, well, there is the need to break Lagos free from the captivity of the godfathers that be. The godfathers have that structure. They know how to run and play this game called politics. Do you think that just the ideology, thinking that you can necessarily shake up the godfathers that be and define how certain states operate is enough of an excuse that would raise it, some it, impact. It, it, it's not because all the 73 political parties, apart from the APC and PDP, there was none that raised any impact, just barely tens and thousands of votes. This, this thing is beyond rhetorics. It's be, it goes into practicality. How are you able to put this thing into practice? To shake up? Yes, because that person you think is in bondage does not see himself or herself as being in bondage. <laughs> An average, let me say, Nigerians don't understand that the government owes them certain responsibilities. Nigerian, a Nigerian was not brought up to understand that the Yoruba calls something almost Joba that through what they call the plateau uh, covenant mm. that you have submitted your rights to the government to take care of certain things and every nigeria doesn't know that the right he has submitted to the government by electing them is for them to be able to do certain things that's why when you look at the nigerian constitution section 14 the primary purpose of government that is the only thing that the constitution has given to government Security as the first thing. Life After that, welfare. Anything beyond that. That is why, unfortunately, Nigerians don't understand that. That's why an average Nigerian, when you want to build your house, apart from every other thing, you must think of how to dig a hole as part of the cost of building the house. And buy a generator. When you want to open a shop, like a barbing salon or a salon, you must, first of all, by the time you are buying your clipper, your everything, you must include generator which is expected to be provided by the government. So if a Nigerian believes that he has to provide electricity on himself, tell me how you can go and campaign to him that this government is useless because it's going to give you light. The guy will be looking at you, but I'm providing my own light. How do you tell the people we call physically challenged? You get to some media, you see them that they won't fill in the potholes. Something government should do. So how now do you tell and go and tell that person that government is supposed to give you road? I'm going to give you road. He will be looking at you. Those who said it two years ago, what did they do? So how it, do we it, change it, it, the narrative? How do we change the mindset? Because all all the that, conversations we've had this evening is about mindsets. It's about how we the prisms through which we look at the situation or our circumstances as a country. Education has a lot a lot to play. I mean, real education, because education does not just mean going to school, go and learn physics, chemistry, biology. Education is how to teach you to be independent-minded. Education to teach you to know that this is what is right, what is wrong. How many Nigerians, even that with graduates, university graduates, if after about six days you don't have a public electricity, if by chance electricity come, unconsciously you will say up Nepal, unconsciously. It is not, it has been programmed into you. Then you ask yourself, up Nepal after six days. That is why a government will fix the road. That's supposed to be their primary responsibility. And some people will be putting the uh, advert on in Zipa, thanking Mr. President for fixing Lagos by the Express Road. It is, it, it, is, it, it is a whole lot of awareness. To, like, uh, I think it was Bob Mali who said there's a need for us to free ourselves from mental slavery. There's a mental slavery. So it, it goes beyond this thing. Election will come and go. Those people you see dancing at rallies, if you know what happens, you will be amazed. Some of them collect as low as 500, 1,000. But do you think now the meeting that the APC has had with um, Igbo leaders in Lagos states is just to wield a stronger impact and ensure that they still retain the power in Lagos states? Yes, they know the PDP is the main uh, opposition, but they also understand that there are smaller parties that are also trying to tussle it out. <laughs> they might not necessarily wield 
enough of an impact, but the APC seems to want to ensure that they have a full grip of Lagos states. Therefore, they've actually even gone to the areas where they think they are not having so beautiful the relationship. You, you know, the, the tactics in politics is that while you are holding on tight to your stronghold, you try to also make incursions into the opponent's stronghold. Not because of anything. Because in election, every vote counts. One there, two there. So it's not because, to my own understanding of the politics, it's not because they want to win the entire race in, in voters. It's just a matter of how do we get our own maximum so that by the time we add to what we are, to what we are going to get from our strong, stronghold. Because in politics, as I said, every vote counts, even one vote. Mm. But the question you are talking about, the question you asked about the so-called fringe parties, you asked yourself, in the last election, that is the February, February 26th, Abby? 23. February 23rd. Mm -hmm. what, it was, what is the aggregate of the votes? All these people that said they are endorsing. 10, 20, 30. What is the aggregate? Was the, it was a very low margin. You can imagine. So, it is just, like I said, it's always a part of politics. Major alliance, endorsement, for a game, for a, something that you know. But the point is, if we want to be sincere with ourselves, the reality of the, the March 9 election is that in Lagos State, it's between APC and PDP. Let me just ask a question that I've been playing with in my mind. In every country, there are always a set of undecided voters who don't know where or who they're going to vote for. How do political parties or politicians take advantage of those undecided votes? Because they could determine how the vote swings, in uh, which direction uh, uh, it goes. Uh, unfortunately, the merging between those who have made up their minds and the undecided voters, it's very low. I mean, the margin. Because and, uh, those who are traditionally voters, they are always there. But come rain, come sunshine, they must go and vote. But unfortunately, among the undecided votes or voters, it's usually after all said and done, I go and stay in my house. None of them has persuaded me. Unfortunately, for Nigeria, or for in Nigeria, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that is why they hardly play any role or any part in deciding who wins election. Mm. We would always use the last election as an example, because when you have people like for, uh, that, uh, Professor Kingsley Magalu. And you look at the people that are in the front line, then you know that there is a need for us to do what we call political awareness. And I think the mistake that these people made, I mean, they supposed to be the third force. Perhaps if there are poor resources in terms of candidature, in terms of brain, in terms of response and resources, mm. then too, like a late American president, Ronald Reagan did, when he wanted to contest. And I think um, this man did the same thing, uh, Barack Obama. You try to discover a new generation of voters. Mm. There are some voters that are perpetually Republican, Democrat, nothing can change them. But when you now decide to go and look for a new generation of voters, and they are mostly among the youth. So until a, the serious candidate does that, because if you are still going to try to poach, let me use the word poach, from the ones that are already under the stronghold of APC, PDP, mm -hmm. or whatever name they come, it could be NPN, a, a action group, it could be any name, they can come in any other any name, but we know traditionally where they belong. If you think you are going to poach from their camp, it will be almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Because some families grew up to inherit political party in Nigeria. <laughs> are you aware? Mm -hmm. Some parties. They grew up to inherit political parties. My like father was region. leftist, mm. so I must be leftist. My father <laughs> was rightist. So the thing that you need to do now is to now discover a new generation, or recruit, let me use the word, mm. a new generation of voters mm. that will see things from the modern day trend. But if you continue to look at all this we have seen, I am endorsing this, I am endorsing that. Okay, you want to free Lagos, according to my mm. very good friend, Olui Adeniji, they want to free Lagos from the stranglehold. Mm. of a politician. I was expecting them to look at somewhere different body that completely away from APC, PDP. And you are taking somebody who left PDP but, but because if, he couldn't but, get but the ticket. if we go by what you're saying, there are people who were fielded in the presidential uh, elections who were totally not PDP or APC. Mm. 
but we saw the votes. That's why I said the mistake so, they so, made so, was trying to poach from the traditional voters. There's no way those guys could have abandoned a Buari or an Atiku for a Prince Kinsley Mogalu because they have their mind already made up. So all this analysis that Mokalu was making on television, everywhere he goes, so you listen, you watch this man, mm. you ask yourself, why has God not blessed Nigeria with kind of a person? Mm. But God, God, God cannot come down to come and vote for us. So the need, there's a need for the, maybe the, they should have a strategy department, research, planning and strategy. Let them begin to recruit new voters. Mm. Okay, okay, now, um, Dickpo, before we round up the conversation for tonight, this segment, I would also like to have your thoughts. Now, away from Lagos State, INEC has said, well, in Bielsa State, they were able to uh, identify that 63 card readers have so far gotten missing across uh, Brass Ward 6, Unit 19, Nembe Wards 1, to, uh, 1, 12, 13, Salt Ejo, Sagbama Ward 1, uh, Yenugwa Wards 1, 11, and 16, totaling 63. And the INEC says that, well, between Monday and Wednesday, that they expect that these card readers will return. We've not had any update from INEC so far. It's already the close of day. What do you make of this situation as well? My prayer, I think maybe we need to go into fasting and praying. <laughs> do you think we're still is that we more, supposed to? Is that more candidates do not get missing before Saturday? But I mean, INEC said something more like, um, we'll give you a slap on the wrist if you bring it. We're not going to, you know, um, make it make you okay, look bad. Okay, sort of yeah. amnesty. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, if you just return it by Wednesday. You, but you, you is that the route they should have taken? Yes, or it's unfortunate. Uh, it's, it's, except we want to deserve ourselves. The introduction of Kadida is a big threat to election rigging. Mm. How do I mean? Because you know what politicians do at the level of registration, voter registration, mm. is that they will pack all manners of names into the voter's register. Mm. I don't know if you guys are if you are aware that there was a time in in River State, I think during the time of Bosonjo, three million three million people registered for the election, and three million people voted. Nobody died. Nobody relocated. Nobody felt sick on the day of election. <laughs> what, no, what, That's what, hard to believe. What politicians do is they will pack man, all manner of names into a voter register. 500 per polling unit. On the day of election, maybe 50 people will come and vote. Because the other names are Marketa, Marketa Sin, Adolf Hitler, <laughs> Mark, Mark, Bob Marley. And you, it, will, it will interest you to know that on the day of election, all the 500 will vote. So the introduction of Kadida is a big threat to all this manner of shenanigans. That is why nobody will want the Kadida to work. You remember that one of the reasons why INEC postponed the February 2016 election, election was because five days to the day of election, some people went into an Umbra INEC office and burned down 4,000 Kadidas. 4,000. Because nobody wanted the Kadida to function. INEC had to mobilize from places where they had access. And don't forget that these uh, uh, candidates had been configured by polling unit. Yes. So that means that the polling, the, poll, the candidate they're using here, you can't take it to That's why uh, had to, be uh, to, to be use because it is then. configured. Yes. So if, we, if INEC is able to retrieve the secretary as they're going to grant those people amnesty, how are they going to reconfigure again? before Friday. So that's why I said I pray that such more candidates don't get missing. It is just to let you know that this thing, that's what we have been saying. The problem with our electoral process is beyond the neck. Because some people doesn't want the normal process to work. Because if the process works normally, it should not be to the advantage mm. and to the benefit. All so right. as we are talking to INEC, let us begin to appeal to the conscience of an average Nigerian politician. And how do you do that? Because nobody wants to give up criminality freely. Maybe there's a need for us to begin to appro um, app uh, apply sanction. And then, too, maybe there's a need for us to make political offices less lucrative. Who's going to do that? Every time we say that, I, I mean, for me, I feel like that's a joke because who are the people who are the lawmakers? It's the same politicians. So, so nobody wants to commit a class suicide. So, what, exactly. <laughs> how do we do this? It's, it's because, a tough, because it's a tough one. Because some people have also even suggested that let us be giving our politicians minimum wage. This rat race will not be Who's there. Who's going to put the law in place? Because so we're the, not the lawmakers. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, maybe we'll begin to man pressure on them. 
Okay, let's see. We'll occupy National <laughs> Assembly, I guess. <laughs> well, we want to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dikpo uh, Olayoku, uh, a journalist. Thank you so much for it's being always, here. It's with us. We appreciate it's it. Mm. Thank you. And hopefully by Saturday, across the uh, state of the Federation, we'll see a massive turnout and not just a shabby representation that we've seen so far. Thank you very much for joining the conversation. You're and welcome. now, still looking at security for the elections. Yesterday, the president met with security chief and we spoke with two security experts on the subject matter. Let's take a look at our conversation from yesterday. We'll be right back.